Hi everyone, it's Sandy, and today I'm doing a really special book haul slash mini review. During late July, I was contacted by Mark Shaw, who is the author of The Keeper of the Wind, and he created the hashtag Indie Books Be Seen. So any indie author can post pictures of their books or information about their books under that hashtag. And he contacted a bunch of other booktubers to participate. And basically I had to select 5 to 10 books under this hashtag and he would contact the author to send these books to me. So all these books I received from the author. And I have finished reading them all so I'm going to do a combined book haul slash mini review. All of these book reviews are my honest opinions so some don't have that great of a rating while others do have a pretty decent high rating. I'm going to start off with the first book that I received and that is E by Kate Rath. I received this as an ebook. Our main character Eden wakes up in a box with no memories of who she is and what her previous life was. She's out on the streets struggling to survive until she meets this group of people that take her in. That is where the story kind of progresses from there. I didn't know much about this book besides the fact that our main character didn't know who she is and I think that's kind of interesting when a main character doesn't know who she is, what her previous life was. So I honestly didn't know what to expect. This book kind of had a dark atmosphere to it, which I really, really liked. Being out on the streets is very dangerous because there's a lot of violence that occurs and I was constantly at the edge of my seat whenever Eden was out in public because she is like completely vulnerable to people who can harm her. I really loved Eden's character because right from the beginning you know that she is a survivor. There were certain things in this book that didn't really have an explanation to it and there wasn't that much world building. I want to know how the government worked. I really liked all the secondary characters in this book and I love the relationships slash friendships that Eden has formed with all of them. Overall I really enjoyed this book. I like how it was written and I would give it a 4 out of 5 stars. Next I read Infinite Potential by Barbara Guerin. This book is about a woman named Kelsey who recently lost her husband due to an accident. She starts having these dreams of a dark haired man and she starts seeing his like shadow in real life. Then a man named Aiden comes to town who happens to be her new neighbor and he's really mysterious and he also knows about the dreams that she is having. Kelsey's husband's name is Jamie and his death occurs right at the beginning of the book. Right from there you can feel Kelsey's heartbreak, her devastation over the death of her husband. I like seeing Kelsey deal with the loss and seeing her moving on with her life. Sometimes I did find Kelsey a bit frustrating of a character and sometimes I really enjoyed her character so it's kind of like a love-hate relationship. When Aiden comes to town I was instantly intrigued by his sudden appearance. I loved how he was sort of mysterious so it leaves you wanting to know more about him. I liked learning about his background story and seeing Kelsey get more answers from him about all her dreams. The author does write Kelsey's dream in this book and while it was a major part of the book I didn't particularly like it that much because I thought it was kind of overwhelming. I really do like the romance between Aiden and Kelsey. They do have a really great chemistry with one another. This was a slow paced book but I really liked the pacing of it and I did fly through this book. I really liked how short the chapters are and overall I would give this book a 3 out of 5 stars. The next book I read is The Extraction List by Renee N. Meelan. This book takes place in a world where there is a law called the Parental Morality Law and basically with this law if a parent is neglecting a child the government has the right to take the child away from the parents and put that child in a government-run boarding school. And in that school, the child is raised to be a productive member of society. However, that is what people are led to believe because that doesn't really happen at all. Our main character, Riley's mother, is the one that created the law after the death of her son. And then, surprisingly, Riley gets put on the list to be extracted from her mom. So the task force officers come to remove Riley out of her mother's home. So before they got to do that, Riley, her mother, and her mother's boyfriend slash best friend, they run away. They meet this guy named Kane who is a murderer and Kane helps them get away. I really enjoyed this book. It was really easy to follow and it was really engaging. I loved the premise of this book and I loved how action-packed it was. Things were constantly happening and sometimes I wanted a certain scene to last a bit longer than it actually happened. I really did like all the characters but I couldn't really connect to any of them. This is a more plot driven book than a character driven book. Riley is a smart and strong character and I really like the relationship that she has with her mother. And since Kane is a killer you want to know more about him. There is some background story about his life but I kind of wanted more than that. I thought it was really interesting how romance played such a minor role in this book and I really like that. I do love romance in books but I love it when it occurs really gradually and this 
barely had any romance. There are some romantic gestures. Our main character Riley does have a little crush on Kane, but Kane doesn't really acknowledge her as more than a friend. So I really like that. And overall, I really love how fast-paced, action-packed this book was, and I would give this a 4 out of 5 stars. Next, I read The Summer Solstice Enchanted by K.K. Allen. This book is about a girl named Kat who moves to live with her grandmother after the unexpected death of her mother. She starts experiencing these visions and dreams, and on the day of her 16th birthday, she learns a secret about her history that her mother has kept from her in her entire life. To be honest, just looking at this cover, I thought it was going to be a contemporary romance, which I would totally be fine with, but I'm really glad that it's not just a contemporary romance. There is a supernatural aspect to it, and I really, really love that supernatural twist. My only complaint about this book would have to be that it was too short. I really wanted more than what I received. By the time this book ended, so many things were happening and I just didn't want it to end. I really wanted to know more. I thought that Kat was a really great character. I connected with her instantly. And since she doesn't know about her abilities, I like learning things as Kat is learning things about herself. I like how easy this book was to follow. I didn't get confused at all. The author wrote it really well to understand everything. Charlotte is Kat's grandmother's caretaker and I really liked her character because she was a motherly figure to Kat. And Rose, who is Kat's grandmother, although she was sort of cold and distant from the beginning, you know that she really cares about Kat's well-being and safety. There are some mean characters in this book, like mean girls of the town, and even though I didn't like their characters, I thought they were really amusing to read about. This book does leave you wanting to know more, so I can't wait for the second book to come out because I want to know what happens next. I would give it a 4 out of 5 stars. The next book is Rosehead by Ksenia Ansky. I'm not sure how to pronounce that name. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. But this book is about a girl named Lilith or Lilith. I'm not sure how to pronounce that name either, but I'm just going to say Lilith. She and her parents go to Berlin to go to a family reunion that is hosted by her grandfather. The mansion that her grandfather lives in is very mysterious. A lot of strange things occur. But unfortunately, I didn't like this book as much as a bunch of other people really loved it. I was unable to relate to any of the characters. I found a majority of the characters very dislikable. I mean, they are written in a dislikable manner. When I read a book, even if the characters are good or bad, I want to be able to enjoy reading about them. For example, in The Moral Instruments, Sebastian, he was a really bad character and I really hated him, but I really liked reading about him. Lilith is a 12 year old and despite being 12 year old, she's very mature for her age. She even repeats several times that she's an adult trapped in a 12-year-old body. There are two characters that I did enjoy and that would have to be Ed and the dad. Ed doesn't talk, so I thought he was really intriguing and I really liked how gentle and kind the dad was. He was really patient and supportive of Lilith, especially compared to her mother who was like always up in her business, but I thought that was really entertaining to read about. This world is a bit unusual, but it is really imaginative. The grandfather has a rose garden and that rose garden eats people. I feel like the romance in this book was a bit unnecessary. Lilith is 12 years old. She doesn't need to worry about kissing and love. She should focus on her task and that is to prevent the rose garden from eating people. This book also has a talking dog and that talking dog's name is Panther. I really enjoyed the companionship and the conversations that Panther has with Lilith. I did enjoy the second half of the book more than I did with the first half and overall I would give this book a 2 out of 5 stars. Next I read Glaze by Kim Curran. Our main character Petrie is a 15 year old girl who is desperate to get onto Glaze which is a social network that all of her friends and classmates are on and since it's only available to those 16 and over and since Petrie is 15 she can't get on it. One day Petrie is at a peaceful protest that turns into a riot and she gets in trouble for inciting violence. So she receives a five-year ban from Glaze and she hasn't even been on Glaze yet so she is pretty upset by this. Being the desperate person that she is, she seeks underground hackers and she gets a black market chip. However, this chip comes with a bunch of problems. She's unable to control when she gets on and off She's unable to focus on certain things. It's just really chaotic. I love the idea of technology being a major aspect of this society. Considering our world is full of technology and who knows where it would go in the future. I didn't feel any connections to the characters. They weren't dislikable, but I didn't find any that likable either. And with Glaze, sometimes it was a bit hard to understand. The author does explain like the procedure to get onto Glaze, 
but sometimes when Petri is actually on Blaze, it's kind of hard to picture it. Overall, I do understand a majority of it, but there is a bit of confusion here and there. I do feel like the ending is a bit abrupt and rushed. One second, this big thing is happening and the next it's all over. Overall, I really did enjoy this book. It was fast paced and action packed and I would give it a 3 out of 5 stars. Next, I read Saving Yesterday by Jessica Keller. This book is about a girl named Gabby who on her 17th birthday, a bracelet appears on her wrist out of nowhere and she is sucked back in time where she meets a guy named Michael Pace who helps her understand who she really is. She is a shifter who protects humans and history. I haven't read that many time traveling books. I think the only time traveling book that I have read is a Ruby Red trilogy and I thought this was a really great read. This book is full of twists and surprises and the intriguing thing I found about this book would have to be the shades. They are creatures that basically feed off of human despair and when I picture them, I picture them as Dementors from Harry Potter. They give me goosebumps because they're really creepy and scary. I really liked Gabby's character. She is definitely a headstrong character. She's pretty much thrown into this new life and she handles it really well. I thought that Michael and Gabby were a really great team and I loved all the moments that they were in together. This was a well-written, unique time traveling book. I finished it in less than a day and I'm really looking forward to the second one. I would give this book a 4 out of 5 stars. That is all for my hashtag indie books be seen book haul slash review. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. And I hope you guys check out these books that I've mentioned in this video. Thanks for watching. Bye!